In Lesson 10.1, you will apply the counting principle and permutations. Here we can use a tree diagram to count the number of ways that something can happen. In Example 1, at a school cafeteria, you have three different entrees and two different salads to choose from. How many different dinners consist of one entree and one salad? So when we make our tree diagram, we want to indicate that we have three entrees to choose from, entree 1, entree 2, and entree 3. And with entree 1, we could choose one of two different salads. We could choose salad 1 or salad 2. But with entree 2, we could also choose salad 1 or salad 2. And with entree 3, we could choose salad 1 or salad 2. So because our tree diagram has six branches, one, two, three, four, five, and six, we know that there are six different dinners possible. In example two, at a school cafeteria, you have three different entrees, two different salads, four different drinks, and three different desserts to choose from. How many different dinners consist of one entree, one salad, one drink, and one dessert? Well, you can see if we used a tree diagram here, it would get quite large. So instead, we want to use the fundamental counting principle. If one event can occur in m ways and another event can occur in n ways, then the number of ways that both events can occur is m times n. The fundamental counting principle can be extended to three or more events, and in example two, we actually have four events. We have three different entrees, two different salads, four different drinks, and three different desserts to choose from. So if we multiply all of those choices or events together, we find that we have 6 times 12, or 72. We have 72 different dinners possible. Here we can use the counting principle with and without repetition. In example three, the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are used to generate four-digit customer codes. How many different codes are possible if digits can be repeated and cannot be repeated? So in A, when they can be repeated, this four-digit customer code is going to have five choices, 0 through 4, for the first digit, five choices for the second, five choices for the third, and five choices for the fourth. So that product is just five to the fourth power, or 25 times 25, which is 625. So there's 625 different codes possible if digits can be repeated. Now in B, digits cannot be repeated. So then things change. There's five digits possible for the first uh, digit in the code, but then one is used, so there's only four digits left to choose from for the second digit in the four-digit customer code, and then three left, and then two. So this product is going to be 20 times 6, or 120 different codes are possible when digits cannot be repeated, so quite a few less codes possible. In example 4, it says how many different seven-digit phone numbers are possible if the first digit cannot be 0 or 1? Well, we know that in our number system, we have 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way out to 9. So if we're making a seven-digit phone number and we can't repeat uh, we can't use 0 and 1 for the first digit of that 7-digit phone number. We only have 8 choices for that first digit. But then for the second digit, we have 10 choices, and every digit after that we have 10 choices. So we have 10 choices 6 times. So the product would be 8 times 10 to the 6th power, or that would be 8 with 6 zeros. So there's 8 million different 
seven digit phone numbers possible. In example five, you have homework from five different classes to complete this weekend. In how many different ways can you complete the assignments? Here we have an ordering of five objects or five classes. An ordering of n objects is a permutation. And an example is that there are six permutations of the letters A, B, and C. And now this is just our counting principle again because we have three choices for the first place in this ordering, only second left for the third, and one left, or two left for the second place, and one left for the third place. So that would, product would be three times two times one, or six. And that expression, three times two times one, can be written using this notation, three factorial. This, the exclamation point is the factorial symbol. And so in general, n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way out to 3 times 2 times 1. And 0 factorial is defined to equal 1. So now back to example 5, you have homework from five different classes to complete this weekend. In how many different ways can you complete the assignments? The number of different ways would be 5 factorial or 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and that product is 20 times 6 or 120. So 120 different ways to complete those five assignments. The number of permutations of R objects taken from a group of N distinct objects is N permutate R, which equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. In example six, you have homework from five different classes to complete this weekend. In how many different ways can you choose two of the assignments to complete first and last? So here we want to choose two from five. So we've got five permutate two and that's just equal to 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 factorial. So we have 5 factorial in the top in the numerator, so that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And in the denominator, we have 5 minus 2 factorial or 3 factorial, so that's 3 times 2 times 1. Well, we can cancel like factors top and bottom so we're left with 4 times 5, or 20. So in how many different ways can you choose two of the assignments to complete first and last? 20 different ways. The number of distinguishable permutations of n objects where one object is repeated s sub 1 times and another is repeated s sub 2 times and so on is found by taking n factorial divided by s sub 1 factorial times s sub 2 factorial all the way out to s sub k factorial. So in example 7, we want to find the number of distinguishable permutations of the letters in summer. Now because there's two m's in summer, we have to take that into consideration because just switching two m's isn't going to make a different permutation, a different order. So there are six letters, that's our n value, so we have six factorial in the top, but because of those two m's, we have to divide six factorial by two factorial to get the number of distinguishable permutations. So now we have six times five times four times three times two times one in the top, and in the bottom we just have two times one. So we cancel like factors top and bottom, and we're left with 30, times 12, or that's equal to 360. So there's 360 distinguishable permutations. Okay, and now in B, we have waterfall. And in waterfall, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine letters altogether. 
but we have two A's, so we have to account for that. We also have two L's, so we have to account for that. So we're going to divide 9 factorial by 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And when I expand, in the top I have 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. In the denominator, I have 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. So canceling like factors top and bottom, let's get rid of a factor of 2 and 8. And then I'll just run that through my calculator. 9 times 4 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3. And I'm getting 90,720. 90,720 distinguishable permutations. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 9 odd on pages 683 to 686 of your textbook.